uh, this is Anjana uh, from Indo-Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Indo-Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, along with Hoshi Tree Impact and Optius, have been uh, conducting an Indo-Japan Agri Mission webinars uh, since um, 2021 May. So this is the fourth of the series. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our president, Mr. S. Janaki Raman. Good afternoon to all. Uh, warm welcome to all participants, uh, the speakers, organizers to the fourth Agri seminar jointly hosted by IGCCA and uh, Hoshi Tree Impact LLP. We have successfully conducted two Agri missions, uh, Agri tour delegation to Japan in the past, and we have conducted uh, three seminars on various topics related to agri. Those include organic biostimulant, preservation of agri products, and safe transportation of food and medical products. Focus of this seminar is on handy spraying through drones for fragmented farming. Drones have evolved over the last two decades with high volume deployment, low aid cost, and multiple usage. Drones can be seen today from videography and entertainment, logistics and delivery, defense and surveillance, and to agri-management. Drones have a high potential to support the agri-space, be it to optimize the input of seed or fertilizer or pesticides or water, to react faster to the threats like pests and fungi, assessment of the soil condition, and estimation of the yield. Agri in India has not much used the automation in the past, but lack of availability of the labor, increasing cost of labor, need for optimal use of resources, need to increase productivity, or motivating the use of automation in the agri space in the recent times. And reduced cost of technology and multiple applications of the drones are enabling deployment of drones into the agri space much more than what it was in the past. Net net drones have a very high potential to revolutionize the agri space. Welcome all once again to the Indo-Japan Agri-Mission Seminar Series 4. Thank you for attending. Today, we have a special guest for opening remarks. Anjana-san, could you introduce uh, uh, the guest to all? Yes, yes, we are uh, very pleased to have Mr. Vasant Bhatt. He is the CEO of Triti Robotics Private Limited. His journey on drones and its research started from 2005-15 onwards. In 2018, Triti received Agriculture Minister GOI Startup India Award and uh, AIM ANIC Niti Aayog Government of India selected Triti for one crore grant in aid in 2019 and selected as finalists of first national startup awards by government of india in 2020 triti builds agricultural drones for spray and data capture in line with qci dgca rpas guidelines and operates across india for on time uh, farm uh, care crop uh, care services at affordable cost Let's hear more from uh, Mr. Vasant. Over to you, please. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be a part of uh, this program. So thank you for the opportunity given. I hope I'm uh, audible to everyone. Yes, yes, Mr. Vasant. So uh, India has got around uh, 140 uh, million hectares or 300 million acres um, and half of it sown twice. 
So the market is huge, but uh, when you look at the, the individual farm size, it is less than uh, two or three acres, uh, which is very fragmented. And then we have a lot of different agroclimatic zones and the region, and then different terrains, and then it has got uh, you know a multiple uh, a fragmented uh, you know crop growing uh, you know uh, sections within the district or taluk. Uh, however, every uh, you know a crop or a, a seasonal crop would require at least two times of spray, and uh, not necessarily the you know the fungicides or pesticides or chemicals. Uh, you know with the new intent of uh, you know fertilizers and uh, even the micronutrients and adjuvants which which is not done effectively by you know traditional farming that that's the the problem because getting on time service the crop management is it's not happening uh, because the the laborers uh, are not punctual or you know not available uh, when the farmers really requires. And then we have uh, traditional methods of servicing the farms. Oh, we still not reach to a level where uh, the custom hiring centers are available across the region. Uh, so the getting the task done of a spring or uh, certain fertilization is uh, yeah, not done on time. And the agriculture, especially some of the very sensitive crop sensitive, the sensitive weather sensitive crops like vegetables and flowers and fruits, uh, they really get uh, affected if it is not done on time. And uh, so uh, coming back to this industry as a drone, as I have seen, I, I would like just to add few you know, pointers because that could help uh, the people here. Um, when, when we started, uh, there was one company uh, from Japan, uh, you know, from Yamaha, uh, that's called R-Max, and even they're flying today, the same model. Uh, it was uh, very dependable and uh, they have done a lot of research for many years uh, and they were doing only the service, not the sales. Um, they had an, uh, a miniature type of, uh, helicopter uh, controlled by a remote controller. So that was, that was kind of a first that anybody would uh, look into the history of agriculture spraying by drone. So that is the first model that anybody would look at it in 2009, 10 and 11. And then there is a TTA Beijing uh, was slowly up the ante and then started the battery operated hexa and uh, uh, multi-rotors. So which, which uh, 15 liter, 20 liters drone, you know, started coming into trials. Uh, the back in India, 2014, when the new government came, there was an, uh, the blanket ban. Um, the government don't want it to get into a drone until it is really, you know, thoroughly thought after and, you know, uh, discussed with the industry and things like that. So the first thing they did was, an, you know, a blanket ban. So no civilian will fly a drone or UAS whatsoever. Uh, so that put a lot of strain on the startups, which they wanted to or getting into this field. And then it, it, it took a couple of years to really struggle through and, you know, try to bring some kind of a uh, middle level to play where the startups as well as the, the, the government policymakers or, you know, agencies can discuss. And then DGCA was very active in, you know, creating the platform to discuss. And then 2016, when the a Startup India, you know, happened to be, uh, I mean, the released or, you know, came into play. So this created a level ground for all the DPIIT startup, uh, you know, drone players or interested uh, startups to discuss and uh, consult with the, uh, you know, stakeholders. So all these years, like, from 2014 to 2017, 18, uh, the policy, the ambiguity or non-clarity has, you know, put an excessive strain on Indian drone, uh, you know, startups because elsewhere in the world, drones have been flying and drones have been used on multiple, uh, you know, use cases. And there has been extensive, uh, uh, 
you know, improvements. And while Indian startups have just waited to get the policy in place so that at least they can you know, start something. Through some of the, you know, the startups and its initiative, uh, some of the startups like us uh, could able to work with some of the government agencies, uh, not to go to the farmers uh, or get into a commercial activity, but mostly often uh, demonstrations, trials, and you know, nozzle efficacy trials, and then uh, chemical efficacy trials, and different crops, uh, and its uh, regional issues or difficulties. Uh, so those, uh, you know, came up, uh, you know, during that time, and that was a kind of an uh, litmus test for most of the startups, which unfortunately very few could able to survive with this uh, kind of a delayed, uh, you know, process and uh, struggle. And uh, 2018, where the draft policy came with 35, uh, you know, licensing regimes uh, for a uh, drone player, which is almost similar to an uh, air aircraft. Uh, you know, licensing and operating. And then 2020, uh, luck by chance, um, we had a new minister taking place and then uh, that the long due of uh, the policies of, you know, drone policy has happened, uh, which eventually that it, it eased from 35 licensing uh, back to bringing to the five, uh, you know, registration requirements. So I think this is a good sign. Um, you know, the first movers have already taken all the, the pain and the, the struggle and the market is uh, really right because now everyone knows what is a drone is. You don't have to show them or you don't have to tell them. So somewhere we will have to you know, start using it because that is not happened. Uh, we will somewhere have to go uh, to the farmer uh, either through the service or a sale uh, still, uh, I would say my personal uh, experience is selling in high value equipment to a farmer is a very, uh, very niche market yet. Uh, looking at uh, the, the number of investment, amount of investment, and then uh, the learning, the technology and limitations of it. Um, the, the drone is a medium, definitely. It can't be applied to everything. It, is, it, it can never be a tractor. So, uh, you know, it, it, it has got a wonderful, um, you know, a pluses and very few minuses, especially like, you know, crops like coffee. And drones are very hard to use, uh, looking at its multiple, uh, you know, uh, crop, uh, which is uh, you know, surrounded or uh, the canopies that we call. So future is definitely bright. Uh, Indian agriculture would really need something to be uh, automized, but a very precise way, reduce the water, reduce the chemical, save the time and provide it on time uh, with, with a, a fraction of cost. That is where uh, we should head. And uh, I would uh, really appreciate the time and I mean the gift of the time of everyone here and the opportunity provided. And uh, thank you so much. Okay, now uh, let us welcome the presenters today. Originally, the Fazex was in the import business of radio controlled cars and parts. We are, uh, Mazex has been uh, growing significantly through developing and uh, selling drones since 2015. Mazex was established in 2017 and focused on industrial drones, becoming one of the top selling drone manufacturers in Japan. Mazex have co-developed drone products for the forestry industry with Sumitomo Forestry since 2019 and successfully commercialized the transport drone product for the first time in Japan. Another speaker, Ms. Mikiko Kinoshita, CEO Kinoshita COLTD and also overseas business coordinator and trading for Mazex. She worked as an interpreter for IJCCI's agri mission to Japan in 2018 and 2019. Through her long-term experience in global companies and her network, she helps Japanese companies to develop overseas business, including translation of the website and business-related matters. Uh, then uh, interpret 
interpreter services. Besides, as a CEO of Kinoshita CEO at GD, uh, she mainly handles the sales and the installation of surveillance camera. So uh, they will now present Tobisuke together. Um, my name is Masayuki Matsuzoe. え、こんにちは。え、本日はお忙しい中お集まりいただきありがとうございます。え、え、ま、for your uh, the future opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, today, we would like to talk about future of Mazix drone in India. We want to talk about, about us. We, Mazix, are an agri-drone specialized company. As you know, drone has various shapes and specifications depending on use purpose. Drones are used in various, various industries like infrastructure, agriculture, aerial photography, transportation, measurement, and so on. All contents and the parts are different as well as its size. Now we provide big size drones, especially in the agriculture and transportation industries. And we have been developing them in Japan and selling in the Japanese market for six years now. Through the past experience and knowledge, we try to provide durable drones with the required functions by industry. So far, we have sold over 1,500 agri drones since 2015. Why Mazix is chosen? Number one, our first priority is the spring function of fertilizer. In general, you focus to the flying capability, such as automatic flight or flight controlling. However, the purpose of our drones is to shorten the work burden and spray the fertilizer efficiently. In our case, we focus to a spraying performance. Then we design and configure the shape and the components of the drone. That's our concept. It's just like a pistol compared to a machine gun. Number two is price and reliability. In Japan, we are leading company in the sales quantity, about 10 times more, compa more compared to the Japanese manufacturers so that we can offer you the competitive price. In addition, based on those results, we study our customers' feedback and incorporate the issues to further development of our new product in timely manner. We have an official approval and a patent technology. We have our own developed flight control device without accessing, accessing the internet. Japan also has an issue of aging of agricultural workforce. Usually you need control drones with tablet. However, it may be difficult for the seniors to manage the drones with it. Therefore, the, we developed the drone without using the internet. By our origin, original flight controller, you can easily handle and control the flight. Now we want to introduce our product line. Number one, Tobiske MG DX for fertilizer spraying. Tobiske Mini for fertilizer spraying. Morito for carrying in forestry. Nobisuke is for wi wiring and making cables, ways. So these are the pictures of those uh, product line. Tobisuke, Tobisuke Mini, and Morito 
we worked with the uh, Sumitomo Forestry and also Nobisuke. And we want to talk about rea uh, reliability now. So we are we have approval of agriculture, forestry, and fishery aviation association. For Tobiske MGDX, every drone manufactured by us is approved, and also uh, it's approved as an official maintenance factory for drones. And we are also approved as Higashi Osaka brand local city brand products and about the patent technology japanese patent for tobiske mg and dx four nozzles and switching system of flying forward and backward with two propellers and its combination that is our patent and for morito system to prevent the resonance and others uh, Japanese patent applied for Tobiske Mini, unique shape of improving the spring performance. And for spring device of Grano, shape of impellers and its combination. That's already applied. Now we want to go with demonstration video. Spraying is automatically controlled so that the front sprayed from the forward nozzle and back is sprayed from the back nozzle. At the moment of spraying from the nozzle, the downwash of the front propeller blow down the drag and the rear propeller has passes over it further suppresses the drag. And the spraying performance does not change even when moving forward and backward. You can use twice as much downwash as usual. And you can even spray on the surface of the crop. And also the back of leaves and roots of vegetables and fruit trees, which is also effective in reducing drift and preventing it from flowing to the surrounding field. This spraying system was originally developed by Mazix, which is patent. Automatic flight mode. Automatic spraying flight is possible just by pressing the switch over points A and B and the front back lateral movement and on and off of the spraying device are all automatically controlled. The spraying device is turned on only when moving back and forth. And the spraying device is turned off when hovering and literally moving. So here is the demonstration video of mini uh, Tobiske Mini. Uh, the spring performance is almost same or even mini, but uh, we developed more efficiency than the before. And also uh, this is a light uh, weight, but uh, with the great performance. So you see clearly the downwash and also the powerful uh, spraying performance. And then it can go back and uh, forward and uh, very efficiency, efficiently. And then it's more than 150 increase than the conventional uh, product. Now, we want to introduce our features. And uh, these are very uh, easy operation. Now, the tank. Tank is five liters now. 
and this one is a mini and the spraying width is uh, four meters and wind resistance speed is eight meters per second and for liquid and granule there is a uh, attachment so it can be easily replacing you just pull the pin and the slide it and about uh, our uh, automatic attitude control switch and it keeping great flight stability even in strong winds and for uh, fertilizer we have big charger port so it's easy to put and remove it and also lightweight and foldable so quite easy to handle so uh, now we want to uh, provide our proposal to indian market Now, actually, we are now developing seven liter spraying capacity and will be launched in next spring. Currently, uh, we know the drones in India, it's just like uh, five liters to 10 liters. But we think uh, we should aim at the one in between five liters to 10 liters. So now we want to go with seven liters. And it will be uh, the good for small and medium size of fields, easy handling and operation, reasonable and competitive price. And uh, these days, there is some service company is uh, preferred or the favorable. So now spring as a service, can be possible for the first step. But uh, actually, we are seeking a reliable sales partner company to work together to improve the work efficiency in the agriculture industry in India. So now today, your comments and ideas would be appreciated for further development. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I think this was one of the very good, like one of the four webinars we have had. This has been one of the very good webinars we have had. The most uh, striking part of this is that this addresses one of the most important need at various levels for the country and the individual. For example, we are addressing the ecology by reducing the use of uh, chemicals and making it precise, which is required for the country and, and the economy as a whole. The cost of fertilizers have been going up very significantly in the last two years and impacting the government as well as the farmers. Then there is a microeconomy of the farmers, which this directly affects. The biggest problem faced in agriculture today is shortage of labor. People are unwilling to do certain agricultural jobs, especially like spraying, which is hazardous. I think here a machine can replace a person and save the health of the person. So this technology is a great boon to a farmer. However, as Mr. Vasant had explained, that this has taken a journey of more than eight, nine years of bringing it to a particular shape where it can be used by many people. So there has to be a culmination of many people coming together, many stakeholders coming together. Apart from the companies, there has to be a huge skill development which we need to focus on by getting the entrepreneurs, local youth as entrepreneurs who can take this forward and interact with the farmers in a uh, very trustful manner as explained by 
Mr. Vasant Bhatt uh, when he has interacted with farmers. So I look at this, the whole business, not merely only as uh, a manufacturer or sales or marketing, but of generating huge employment of the youth. I say this because the youth normally gets interested if there is technology available and it gives a pride of using the technology. So a drone technology is seen as like it is a higher level than driving a tractor. So I think this will attract many educated youth to come into this business. I think we need to use those resources by bringing them, giving them training and upskilling them. So I see a huge opportunity for this technology in India, not only as a farmer, as a user, but also a person who is interested in engaging the youth of this country for a productive use. Thank you very much.